water is much more current than we thought initially. It's making me zigzag. Wow. We're at 4,000 RPM on the engine. We're making less than a knot. This is insane. I'm Maya, and this is Aladino. In mid-November, we converted our 28-foot sailboat into a riverboat, and we started going north, from the Mediterranean all the way to the North Sea. In front of us, we had 2,000 kilometers, 200 locks, an upstream current, and the onset of winter. Join us as we navigate the inland waterways during off-season. This is North Through the Continent. We're going north through the continent. It's day two of our river journey. We woke up in the ancient city of Arles, 40 kilometers up the Rhone River from our starting point on the Mediterranean coast. Although the current was quite strong yesterday as we entered Arles, we hope that the current will diminish as we leave the city. The forecast is for more sunshine today, although in a few days it'll turn to rain. We want to make as much progress as possible now while the weather is still good. We'll cast off at first light. What's the temperature? Oh, more than I want it to be. More or than? Or more than it feels. I thought it's like two or three degrees, but it's actually seven. I think this thermometer is, is wrong, because yesterday yeah. it was reading 25 degrees inside, which was But the sun was wrong. hitting that side of the wood. Yeah, even still. That changes a lot. It's about 7.30, sun is just coming up, and we're getting ready to leave. Goal today is to get to Avignon and potentially even through the Avignon lock, but we'll see how the current is. Current is definitely stronger going through town here than it was at any other section of the river, I think, because it just narrows a little bit. So I'm hoping that that current reduces as we go upriver, um, but we'll just have to see. And watch out, the decks are very slippery. I know, yeah. I didn't know that, that's a drawback of teak. When it's, it's cold. It's frozen, mm -hmm. not cold when it's, yeah, what do you call it? Frosty. Frosty. Vroom, 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 here we go. So the current does actually feel a little bit better than it did yesterday Definitely. and and I'm wondering if that's because it's quite early in the morning and apparently the hydroelectric dams because at the locks are also some hydroelectric dams and they let out more water at peak electrical time so we were coming in in the evening when everyone's coming home and turning on their lights and their heaters and now it's the morning not everyone is awake so I'm wondering if that's the reason the current is uh, so much better this morning. And if that's the case, then that's fantastic, and hopefully it doesn't increase too much in the evening. Could you actually turn the position lights on, please? Yeah. Because it's quite a bit uh, mist, misty still. Yeah. And um, pass me the VHF, please. Um, that one always has to be on here. And uh, also, if you could turn on the instruments, please. Yeah. I'm about to show you how to piss off an Italian in just a few simple words. Watch this. Hey Dini, hmm? the nice thing about uh, adding chocolate milk to my coffee is that I don't taste the coffee. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we were bound to make mistakes. We love, we thought. It was always on fire, our house, our dream. As we continued out of the city, we quickly realized that the reduced current was a hopeful illusion. We averaged between one and a half to two knots speed over ground, painfully slow, especially since we were running our engine at full power. 
whirlpools shot by, occasionally grabbing the bow. The Rhone has been tamed by dams and locks compared to its original rapid pace, but nonetheless, it's still a very large river, and it was making sure we were aware of that. We're about to enter the village of Tarascon on one side and Beaucaire on the other side, two towns. And uh, Navionics actually warns you that the current is much, much stronger in between the two bridges. So I'm curious how we will manage. Because we've already been going so slow all day. Yesterday we were averaging three and a half to four knots and today we've been pretty much maximum two knots. Yeah, totally. Up ahead, the channel narrowed as predicted and our speed suddenly decreased even more. It's making me zigzag. Wow. Oh my gosh, this is definitely the strongest current we've experienced so far. And the boat is just... Do you see this huge whirlpool here, Dini? Yeah, but we're really being pushed a lot, which I don't like. As we neared the bridge, our speed kept decreasing. We pushed the engine even harder. Whirlpools grabbed our bow violently. The Rhone now made no pretense. Whereas before, its strength had been hidden below a glossy surface. Now, even the surface whirled and danced around us, plainly demonstrating the power of this current. We knew we had a long voyage in front of us, but at these speeds, it would be far longer than we even thought. We're at 4,000 RPM on the engine. We're making less than a knot. This is insane. Come on, you can do it. Oh my god. I'm just trying to keep the bow uh, straight forward as much as possible because if it gets us sideways, I cannot get it back. This is crazy. Okay, we're under the bridge now. And I think up ahead is looking a bit better. We're gaining speed again. We're now at two knots again. Well, we're going between one and a half and two, but that's better than less than one. <laughs> but the engine's still at 4,000 RPM as well, which isn't good for it. Um, we'll slow it down when we can. Stressful. Stressful. <laughs> yeah, oh. romantic cruise in the French mm. canals, hey? <laughs> Fortunately, immediately after that experience, we were rewarded for our adventures by the Chateau de Tarasson. Yes, thank you! Thank you for the warm welcome! Thank you very much! My guidebook says that this was one of the finest medieval castles in France, but during the Seven Years' War, it was also used as a prison. Apparently, there are tours here where you can peer at the inscriptions carved into the stone walls by its former prisoners. Unfortunately, there was nowhere to dock, and in any case, we wanted to get as far upriver as possible. At barely two knots of speed, we needed all the time we could get. And now there's a lock, our first lock of this trip, about one nautical mile in front of us. Well, I guess it's technically not our first lock. There's the tiny one in Port Saint Louis, but the water level pretty much doesn't change in that one. So this is our first big river lock. And uh, yeah, Dini just phoned ahead or called ahead on the VHF and told the lock operator that we're coming. And he asked a few questions about where we're going, where we came from, etc. We'll just now wait for the lock. As you see, we also tied up onto the same one because otherwise the distance would be 
way too big it's way easier to go on the same one and you just have to adjust sometimes I have to let go or pull and the same with Maya these big locks are fun because the water rises quite quickly in the smaller canals it's really slow <laughs> all right we're out of the lock and it might be too soon to say but it feels like the current is greatly reduced which would be a dream i really hope that's true yeah even if it wasn't true i got uh not anxiety but like combined with the cold that already made me like chilly and frosty uh yeah and then also the nerve-wracking currents we just had oh i think i have to sleep over it <laughs> before getting rid of it but fortunately we realized that the current in this new section of river was quite tame We were making between three and four knots, and the rest of the day passed uneventfully. We approached the ancient city of Avignon, home of the famous Bridge to Nowhere. However, we wanted to get as far as we could before dark, so we continued past Avignon to the next lock, the Écluse d'Avignon. We are in the Écluse d'Avignon. I was definitely able to relax the last two hours compared to the stress we had this morning because we were able to go four knots and we had only one knot of current just the last couple of miles. That was really nice. We exited the lock at sunset and tied to one of the docks which are always stationed both up and down river from each lock. These docks never have any water or electricity, but they are usually situated slightly outside of towns, next to forests or uninhabited riverbanks. Private dock for the night, look at that. This is what I was waiting for yesterday. <laughs> oh, why thank you, kind sir. You're welcome. Well, la -di -da, look at that. Our home on the water. out of over 2,000. It's only our second night on the river, but it already feels like a lifetime, made up of such vastly different stories. The jubilation of getting underway, the challenge of whirlpools and almost unnavigable currents, the joy of exploring ancient cities, the biting cold air in the misty mornings, the sense of adventure from riverside bonfires. This journey has challenged us so far, but I suppose that's also what makes it an adventure. Any worthwhile adventure has its challenges and its sweet moments. And luckily for us, today was ending on a sweet moment, gathered around a campfire, unbothered by cars or people, singing blues into the darkened trees, and imagining 
imagining myself into a scene from Huckleberry Finn. The next day would just bring more adventure. As they go strolling by Oh, all the things that might have been God forgive me if I Thank you to all of you for watching. If you're interested about how this journey continues to unfold, then please hit the subscribe button and make sure you click the little notification bell next to it so that you get a notification as soon as a new episode is published. An extra big thank you to our patrons for making these episodes possible. I'm really not kidding when I say that these episodes wouldn't exist without you, so just a huge, huge thank you for all that you do for us. And an extra, extra big thank you to these folks who really go the extra mile to make sure these videos keep happening. We'll see you in the next episode.